Good day everyone, my name is Arian Nilao, the last reporter of Chapter 7, Artistic and Creative Literacy, and I am here to discuss the subtopic, the essential components to developing or designing curriculum that cultivates students' artistic and creative literacy. Our objective states that at the end of this chapter, you should be able to a. Define artistic literacy and or creative literacy b. Identify the essential components to developing or designing curriculum that cultivates students' artistic and creative literacy and c. Appreciate the value of arts to education and practice life. When you hear the word art, what good word suddenly comes into your mind? We have art is fun, art is all about colors, art is drawing, art is painting, art is beautiful, art is emotional, art is deep, and art is more than what meets our naked eyes. And however, art is not just simply art itself. Art is also a literacy. Now, art actually contributes to the development of the literacy of our growing children. What is art according to Susan Wright? According to her, art is one of the oldest and most fundamental forms of human expression and communication. At its core, art is embodied experience through action which is a form of intelligence that underpins all other forms of reasoning. Through art, young children demonstrate foundational ways of understanding symbols, systems, and connections, and their fluidity in using these for expression and communication is fundamental to their ways of being. Because of the play-oriented compositional characteristics of art making, are essentially the literacy par excellence of the early years of child development. Young children's learning must begin with the simple and progressive to the more complex, and that is through the arts. The aim of this chapter is to focus on very young children's existing sophisticated capacities or literacies and feature how the arts are central to the curriculum for young children. Art as first languages. It is said that one way of thinking about the arts is as a language, a means for communicating and expressing. The arts might more appropriately be regarded as children's first languages, their primary ways of seeing and knowing the self and the world and the means to interpret and express meaning. And now, I want to ask what are your opinions on arts being regarded as children's first languages? Do you consider art as children's first language? Why yes? And why no? You may comment your answers on the comment section below or at the side of your screen. So if we ignore these first languages or if we ignore art and play of children blinds us to the complex, abstract, and sophisticated thoughts and feelings of children as they work with the first order signs or symbolism such as picturing, dramatizing, dancing, and making music. And that is according to Lev Vygotsky. Art plays a major role in understanding the second languages. Very young children who have not yet learned to read and write and are still developing their ability to speak can use art forms in very accomplished ways. Infants and very young children generally draw prior to acquiring skills of reading and writing texts such as letters, words, phrases, and sentences. They use first-order symbolism fluidly across modes and indeed the act of representing thought and action while drawing actually strengthens children's later understanding of the second languages of reading, 
writing, and numbering. And right now I am going to show you two videos that show how very young children learn and develop their literacies through art in education. Hi, I'm Helen Teddy Otis, founder of The Arts Kids. I've been a primary school teacher in Enfield for the past 12 years and I've been literacy and performing arts leader across various schools. I'm here to tell you today about a project called Literacy Through Art. It's a training project for teachers in the primary years and runs from reception to year six. It's all about that amazing journey that leads into the best quality writing. The programme begins with quality teaching of artwork, helping pupils to visualise and become engrossed in the detail of their imaginations. We follow on with drama that focuses specifically on oral rehearsal, which then also incorporates some music. These sessions are followed by modelled high quality writing from the teacher which is differentiated and supported for all pupils leading into well structured independent writing. All teachers become fully trained beforehand and are supported throughout with the planning, teaching and assessment process. More importantly this programme is all about the children. It helps them to create a solid foundation before writing. It's fun, it's engaging and you will see your children's love for writing grow along with great improvements in their progress. I had a little person come last week to share with their drawing and, and share their storytelling around what they had drawn and there was a new confidence, a new sense on, I'm a successful learner. And it's now up to us as a school as a teacher to take them that next step into their writing, but both the child and the teacher's approaching it with so much more confidence because of the skills that they've already demonstrated. We can build on children's ability to communicate before they actually start to use print. Then what we have is children who can create very complex texts from quite a young age. Texts that are multimodal, that include drawing, talking and writing. The drawing also helps enhance the fine motor for the children. Um, and fine motor is something that I think we take for granted in the early years of foundation. It's just something they do naturally and then you can turn it into so much more. They, they learn how to, to write, they learn to be social, the communication, language, math, science and everything will come into it. Watching those videos, we learn that art or drawing helps create a solid foundation before children could actually read and write and how children become more confident because of the skills that they have already been doing and that is through art or drawing. And for that reason, the arts must be included and not left behind in the child's learning. As children progress up in the education system, their core learning experiences of painting, drawing, dance, and song should be given a central position within the curriculum alongside the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. This is because the three R's offer different affordances of learning and all of which are equal importance. Indeed, art as children's first language or first order symbols able to help them learn the second languages or the second order symbols. At this moment, I want you to reflect from the two videos and relate your answers to these two questions flashed on the screen. Why marginalization of the arts to the curriculum a problem? And why is artistic literacy significant in a child's development? And if you have more additional insights, you may comment them down below or at the side of your screen. Moving on, in the book First Literacies, Art, Creativity, Play, Constructive Meaning Making, the authors Mark Ardell, Felicity, which has no picture because I couldn't find one, and Wright Susan proposed 
the four essential components to developing or designing curriculum that cultivates students' artistic and creative literacy. The first component is imagination and pretense, fantasy, and metaphor. Imagination plays a critical role in the early development, increasing children's cognitive, creative, and social skills. Now, through art or drawing, children combine everyday experiences with imagination in a projective, reflective state. So, for instance, when the children draw themselves as other characters, whether real or fictional, including animals or fantasy creatures, they are not just pretending to be another, but they are acting as if they have imagined characteristics, agency, and a range of identities. Now, there are many different ways that children play. Organized games, games with rules, children daydream, pretend, and play with ideas. Now, I want you to recall yourself as a child or observe how your younger siblings play pretend. And that is the work of imagination. Now, imaginative children can explore their thoughts and feelings more deeply and learn how to solve problems. The second component is active menu to meaning making. Now, clearly, there is more to children's drawing than meets the eye. So in this component, children are asked to demonstrate or tell something about their art in a way that works for them, using the art resources and references to support their ideas in meaning making as what was shown in the videos previously. Now, in a classroom where children can choose to draw, write, paint or play in the way that suits their purpose and or mood, literacy learning and arts learning will inform and support each other and somehow a symbiotic relationship between the two. One informs and enriches the other through a process of immersion and a type of improvisational give and take. Now, children gain a deep meaning of the drawing and understanding what goes beyond the surface. Third component is intentional holistic teaching. Now, when we talk about intentional holistic teaching of a child, we need to understand that the teacher aims is the overall development of the child. This intentional holistic approach urges teachers to stop explaining and avoid breaking all learning down into carefully staged bits and sequences. So nevertheless, this does not mean that the teacher has no role to play. And bear in mind that a creative curriculum requires a creative teacher and someone who understands the creative process and purposefully supports learners in their experiences. So what makes this approach is thoughtfulness and purpose. And this could occur in such activities such as reading a story, adding a prop, drawing children's attention to a spider web or to something else that is more interesting and playing with rhythm and rhyme. And this can lead to creativity. The fourth and the last component, co-player and co-artist. Now, being. Sometimes the only way for a teacher to know and appreciate children and what they know is to be present and in conversation, interacting with them as they draw and create their art. Now, this component basically means that the teacher needs to move from being the facilitator to a co-player or co-artist. And those are the four essential components to developing or designing curriculum that cultivates students' artistic literacy. Before this video report ends, I want to share a few personal takeaways about my topic. First, 
I do consider arts as the child's first language because based on my observation on infants and growing children, especially my four-year-old sibling, they tend to experiment a lot when they get an opportunity to hold onto a pen, pencil, crayon, or even a watercolor. And to me, their accomplished works are something self-expressive even when their art or drawing seems incomprehensible or seem to look pointless or even disturbing, but is meaningful and that is art as a first language, the onset of first sign of human communication. Art as an initial learning before the talking, reading, writing letters and words and counting numbers actually takes place as they progress in the education system. The second is, I strongly believe teaching artistic and creative literacy in our classrooms is significant, even when arts is not that valued at all and is however marginalized in our education system as observed locally and globally. But I want and sincerely hope that our education system, sooner or later, will realize the importance of art inclusion into our curriculum and not just considered a creation, a, re a recreational activity, a practice, or an area in the MAPE subjects because the arts is really beneficial to the child's developmental domains, which are the physical, intellectual, cognitive, social, emotional, and moral. The third and the last, I want to emphasize one thing. It is always the role of the teacher to transform a classroom to a place worthy of learning. And that is why offering rich and enjoyable experiences of education to diverse group of learners are creative ways of teaching and learning. And more importantly, teachers are encouraged not to lose sight of the four aforementioned essential components, imagination and pretense, constructive meaning making, holistic teaching, and being a co-player and a co-artist. And that is all and thank you everyone for listening.